To understand and protect the biggest creatures on Earth, you have to study this tiny thing. No, not my thumb. The tiny crustacean known as krill balancing on top of it. Whales consume krill and consume fish in humongous amounts. Off the coast of San Francisco, krill swarm in incredible numbers. And that attracts legions of whales. And scientists aboard the NOAA research vessel Fulmar. Yesterday we had uh, at least 68 whales. It all starts with a process called upwelling. Winds push warm surface waters away, which are replaced by water from the depths. That deep, cold, nutrient-rich water enhances production when it comes up near the surface where the, where the sun is. And we have the phytoplankton blooming. Phytoplankton are food for krill. And lots of krill means lots of blue and humpback whales. To get a better sense of how this ecosystem works, scientists drop sensors and dragnets at different depths to capture samples. Everything from the net gets filtered down into this. We will take the cod end off and put that into our sample jar. For over a decade, they've been gathering heaps of this data and observing whales to better understand and safeguard them. One of the greatest threats that the ocean and marine wildlife face right now is climate change. And there is very little that we can do directly other than uh, decreasing uh, human threats. Threats like the ships running in and out of San Francisco Bay. So officials have used the Fulmar's observation data to tweak shipping lanes to best protect the many whales here. And now we see whales pretty often when we're out on these cruises. Sometimes we have to stop our transit to allow them to move uh, in front of us and finish feeding before we can continue. And it just, it just doesn't get old. 